Hey guys, it's Brie. So today I'm going to be answering the questions that I asked you guys in my last video about menstrual cups. Any questions you guys had about menstrual cups in general. And I'm just going to go straight into it and look at the um, laptop I have right here and looking at all your questions on there. I'm just going to go through them and see how many I can get done in a reasonable amount of time. So straight into it. Can you please do a comparison video for the resistance of a cup? Maybe line them up from soft to stiffest and talk about the two ends and in the middle in your opinion of what works best for when. Uh, actually, quite a few of you asked this question, I noticed going down, so I will do a video on this. Uh, so yes is the answer, I can do a video on that. Is it safe to leave part of the stem out? It is safe to leave it out, but it's really, really uncomfortable and you should really put it, um, you need to get the whole of the menstrual cup in for it to be comfortable. And uh, it's safe because nothing, nothing's going to happen with it out, but it, it really aggravates the entrance to your vagina, so you're quite sensitive down there and you really want to get the whole cup in. But um, it, it's, it's safe to do so, yeah. When your daughter were to start her period, would you let her use cups? If I have a daughter and she starts a period, um, I will let her use cups from whenever she's ready. There is no minimum age for when you can use a menstrual cup, it really is just when you are ready and feel like you can use a menstrual cup. What is the best way to clean your cup in public? Uh, I will do a video on this, it is on my list, um, but it's too complicated to explain in this video, but yes, there will be a video on that. Have you tried this soft cup? I get this question a lot. Actually, yes, I have tried it. It did not work for me at all, which is why I haven't done a review on it. I might do one in the future talking about it and stuff if I can get my hands on another one. Um, but I did not like it at all. Uh, just wanted to ask you if there's a way to make sure that your cup is properly open once it's inside. I mean, does it make a sound or do you feel it when it opens? Some menstrual cups are really firm and resistant. You can feel when they open, but the only real way to do it is to insert your finger up and run it around the entire perimeter of the cup. Uh, if you only um, rub it around part of the way, part of the cup could still be closed and you won't feel it. So you've got to go the whole way around the cup. And if it feels open, it's pressing against your finger, then your cup is open. Can I use a menstrual cup if I have an IUD? This is a really popular question, actually. Again, a lot of you ask this question. Yes, technically you can, but you might want to ask your doctor to cut the strings a bit shorter than normal. Uh, there are occasions when people have tugged on their strings, and it's probably one of the reasons why I've kind of written off um, an IUD as a method of contraception for me in the future. But uh, you can use a menstrual cup with IUDs. I know a lot of people who do use them. Just You need to ask your doctor about that, though. How do you insert a cup? I have a video on that. What do you think is the best cup for an athletic or non-athletic teen? Hmm... For an athletic team, there is actually a cup called the Maluna Sport, and any cup that is firm and resistance is probably good. So the Lady Cup, um, the Maluna Sport, uh, what else is uh, The Yuki Cup. Those are probably three good cups for an athletic team, and non-athletic doesn't really make much of a difference. Um, as long as you have a cup that works for you, it will work no matter what, really. Where can I get a menstrual cup? And I'm scared of putting it in and getting it out. Can you please give me any tips on this? I have a video on tips of getting it in and out, and uh, where can you get a menstrual cup? We can get them from feminineware.co.uk. It's probably the best place. In America, you, c we can't, um, s you can't actually sell cups that aren't FDA approved in America. However, you can get them imported. So you'll probably need to buy the bigger ranges outside of the US and get them imported if you're over there. But in the UK, feminineware is a great place to get it. What is the best cup for a low cervix? Well, I have a low cervix and I can use pretty much any small sized cup. But a really, really low cervix, you have the Maluna Mini is probably your best bet. Cup question, when your future daughter gets her cycle, how young do you think she can use a cup? As I said before, whenever she's ready. Is menstrual cup packaging discreet? I don't want my mum to know it's something to do with periods. Really and truly, it's, you know, your mum is should accept that it's your body and your choice, but I do recognise this isn't always the case. Most menstrual cup packaging is discreet. If you're meaning the shipping, shipping packaging, they don't have like massive menstrual cup written over it. They usually say silicone cup and have gift as the custom form if you get it imported. And I definitely know feminine wear is very discreet, so it will only say... It does have feminine wear return address label on the back, but there's no big stickers or anything on the box itself. I was wondering if once you insert the menstrual cup, you can get rid of the bubble feeling after you insert it. I know it's not leaking, thankfully, but it feels odd, and I was just wondering if I could do something wrong, not inserting it correctly. Some cups do this. It's the air bubble effect, and, um, yeah, basically bubbling over is the effect it is. It just means the air's getting out of the cup. Kind of difficult to get rid of, but I have found that using just water instead of lubricant does make this easier, but then, of course, it's trickier to insert. What are your thoughts on the new cup for a newbie to cups? As long as you know that your cervix is high, it should be fine. It's a good resistance gain, it's a lovely quality cup. Um, but if you have a low cervix and you don't know what you're doing, then it can be a little bit more tricky. Does the lady cup hold past the holes or does it only go to the air suction and release holes? All menstrual cups I've tried can hold past the air suction release holes, but it really is up to you. The kind of agreed upon capacity is up to the air holes, but I personally think you can go way past them. Will you please do a reason to switch to cups video? 
Yeah, I guess I can do that. Could you do a review on a new menstrual cup that's on eBay which has a discharge valve? One does not have to remove the cup during your menstrual cycle, open its valve. I think the cup you're talking about here is the Victoria Love Cup. I have to cut the stems off every single cup I use, so I could not use this menstrual cup if I wanted to. Um, it just would be really uncomfortable, so I can't do a review on that cup, I'm afraid. Do you have to sterilise your cup every month, or is it just a personal preference? How often you do so? Also, does it decrease the lifetime of the cup? Boiling the cup, some people do argue that it does decrease the lifetime of the cup, or using milk and sterilising tablets. Um, I personally don't think it actually does any harm because you're just boiling off the bacteria and stuff. I sterilise my cups, well, sterilise, disinfect is probably a better word to use, my cups every three months. I don't do it every month because I have so many menstrual cups, I usually alternate between my cups. And uh, personally, I don't think you need to. It's, it is personal preference, but I would do it every three, three months at least. I have only used pads. Should I start with tampons or menstrual cups? Uh, it's up to you. If you want to try a menstrual cup, you can try a menstrual cup. If you want to try pads, you can try pads, you know. I, you can use a, t a cup if you haven't used a tampon because it's so different you would need to learn a different technique anyway. But it's a good idea to just take a hand mirror and look at if you haven't seen or don't know what's down there. It's a good thing to do and a good place to start. Recommendations for a first time cup wearer with a super high cervix, heavy flow and no kids yet. I really like to try one but all the choices are making it overwhelming. Please take care of the wet soon. Right, the killer cup for capacity is the Yuki Large. Um, but for a high cervix, it doesn't really matter as long as you have the stem on. You probably do want to try um, the large size of the cup. The large fleur cup is one you could try. Um, the large spell, just any of the large cups really, but make sure you've got a good stem on them. That's a good point to make. Which cup has the lowest diameter to capacity ratio, i.e. which cup has a smaller diameter while still being able to hold a significant amount? I have to say, this is the one thing that I was super obsessed with when I first started trying to find my menstrual cup. I wanted the smallest cup I could possibly find. But trust me, uh, the smallest cup is the small maloon. It has a diameter, I think, of either 40 or 42 millimetres and can hold 15 mil in capacity-wise. It's a small cup. But um, trust me, if you can get a, a cup that's a 42 millimetre rim in, you can get a cup that's got a 45 millimetre rim in. It really does not make much of a difference at all, and I have learned that now, but it's a good tip for me to give, actually. Um, that doesn't make a difference. Just find a cup that you think looks good, that you think will work for your shape, and you will get it in with the right uh, scales, lubricant and everything. I have a video on that. Lunette versus Diva cup for a first cup. Lunette would always be my answer. I'm looking to buy my first cup and I'm considering a ruby, however, it has a hollow stem. Does that mean it will leak from the bottom if I cut it off? Maybe it's a stupid question, but I'm new with these things. Nope, not a stupid question, and nope, it won't leak if you cut it off, but be careful where you're cutting it. Usually, uh, there's the bottom of the cup has a bit of a thickness about that much, from which it's completely solid, it's got no hole in it at all. The stem just means it's squishy like that, but you can cut the stem off, it's fine, the blood doesn't go into the stem of any menstrual cup I found, except the Victoria Love one. Using a cup at summer camp or when otherwise out of the house more than the day or two without a private seat to wash it in. Uh, I have got a video planned for this as well, but the best thing to do is take a water bottle in with you and make sure you've got that full of water and pour the water over it and also take in a flannel. What's the difference between soft and firm cups? Do they affect movement, etc., running, tennis, things like that? A firmer cup will open up much more easily. It's usually um, better for people who do a lot of sports and who have firmer, mus um, stronger pelvic floor muscles. A softer cup is good for people who have looser pelvic floor muscles, who have sensitive bladder issues, and also who are more crampy. Uh, that's just a general overdraft. Some people are uh, the complete opposite of that, but that's generally what we would say. If you wear your menstrual cup only part of the day and pads the rest, do you need to sanitise it before you use it the next day or does a good wash device? Good wash device, easily. I've heard one way to help open a cup is to turn it. Should I turn it using the stem or grab the grip rose at the bottom of the cup? I personally do not see how people can turn their cups. I am always just push it up, pull it down, push it up again. And I will pull it on the stem or if I cut the stem off, I pull it on the cup. It doesn't really matter. But if you're trying to twist the cup, I would definitely grab the grip rings. Could you suggest a way to prevent a cup from leaking at night? Usually at night you will get a bit of leaking. I always leak when I'm wearing a menstrual cup at night just because of the weird angle you're at, especially if you're a heavy overnight bleeder. You probably need a cup with a high capacity and one that has sloping edges like that. Uh, the flare cup and the Sabelle I found to work pretty well for night time. What's your Goldilocks cup or the one you use on your period? I use all of my cups. I really like the Ruby cup, the Lunette cup and I also really like the Yuki cup soft which I have got a video coming up of as well. Everyone's asking me about that too.
Either tilted uterus and tampons have always been a no-go with me. I've read the pros and cons to, about the Maluna Soft Thing Classic and just can't decide it to be better suited. I don't want to have trouble with it popping open, but I also wouldn't want to be too sensitive for the classic. Tips or concerns? Um, with the tilted uterus, all you have to do is tilt the menstrual cup, so I would definitely go for the classic in that instance. If it is too firm, then you will know and you will learn, but really and truly, you've kind of just got to guesstimate with your head. But if you're worried about it popping open, then definitely go with the classic, because the soft is really soft. Hi Brie, I know you don't really recommend the soft Maluna small cup, but I have painful periods and whenever I use tampons, organic 100% cotton tampons of course, I can always feel them inside of me no matter how high up I place them. I've only used tampons a handful of times and I've never used a menstrual cup. In this case, would a soft Maluna small cup be okay? Or since I'm a beginner, would classic firmness still be preferable? Um, this is again personal choice. If you are happy to put more effort into opening the cup up, then a soft will be fine for you if you don't want to risk it. The softer cups do tend, I find, to be um, less trouble when you're crampy. Although I can wear a firmer cup when I'm cramping and I don't seem to get affected by it, but some people do and it is really just a guessing game to be honest. But a classic should be fine because I got irritated by tampons as well and I can wear some of the really firm cups. But um, if you are really worried about that, then you can go for the small. Just be prepared that it might be a little trickier to open. Which cups have the best stems? Uh, for grippiness, I love the Sabelle's cup because it stretches and stuff, but also the Fleur cup has a non-stretch stem, which is great to grab. I've also heard the Lunette stem is really good as well, but as I said, I cut the stems off of all my menstrual cups. It's a bit difficult for me to comment on that one. Can it fall out or travel down when you're exercising or using the bathroom? Uh, actually, I have had a cup fall out of me before, and I've actually had really strong pelvic floor muscles that pushed my soft maloon out. Uh, if you have very strong pelvic floor muscles, then probably going for a softer cup is not a good idea. I've also heard of the Schoon Cup falling out for a lot of people, actually. Um, as you know, I'm not a big fan of that cup to begin with, but I have heard a lot about that one falling out. So if you have strong pelvic floor muscles, then it's definitely a good idea to go for a cup with a stronger suction and with a stronger resistance. And as I said, I will try and do a video on the firm and soft cups. Is the Lunette stiffer than the MC UK, the Moon Cup UK? No, the Lunette is softer than the Moon Cup. Are there any ways of getting rid of stains on a stained menstrual cup? Yes, you can use hydrogen peroxide. I haven't done this because personally I'm not too bothered about it, but I will try it out and get back to you on that. What cup would you recommend for virgins with low cervixes who need a high capacity? I've been told the extra large menina and large flare cup, but I'd like your opinion. Large flare cup, I definitely support that. Everyone seems to say to me who has low cervix and a heavy period that the large flare cup is their golly looks cup, so definitely large flare cup. Which material is better, silicone or TPE like Melina? Personal preference again, but I prefer silicone. If you're wearing a menstrual cup, then do you need to wear any pads with it, or is it okay on its own? Um, I would always, always, always wear a pad for backup, and I only ever use a panty liner, so I can barely feel it's there. Um, but I like to have that backup just in case there's a little bit of a leak. And also, it's it's very common for your menstrual cup to leak a little bit, just because there is menstrual blood around the outside of the cup that tends to move down. Um, especially when you take the cup out and empty it and put it back in, you've pulled the blood down a bit, so it's hard to get rid of all the menstrual blood, so it really is a good idea to wear a panty liner as backup. If you're wearing a menstrual cup, would you need to remove it any time throughout the day or when you need the toilet? You do not need to move, remove your menstrual cup when you're going to the toilet. Some people do when they're really sensitive, um, but usually you don't. I certainly don't have to. And I would usually empty my cup every seven or eight hours when I'm on my heaviest day, but when it's my regular day, I would just leave it for the whole 12 hours. So if I get up in the morning at 10 o'clock and put my menstrual cup in, uh, I won't take it out till nine or 10 o'clock at night. So basically I'll wear it for the whole day. Would a lunette cup be okay for a fairly low cervix? Yes, the lunette would be okay for a fairly low cervix. You just have to take, cut the stem off like I do. What cup is the most comparable in firmness to the lady cup small? Probably the Yuki cup, which is known as the rock. It's very firm, but the Yuki cup is probably the most comparable. Is the Sabelle cup easier to open compared to the Melina Classic in small? No, the Sabelle is one of the softest cups I've ever had, but actually it's okay to open um, if you have the right tip tricks to it, but the Melina Classic would definitely be easier. So that's pretty much all the questions I think I can answer in this video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I will try and get more videos up again this week. I'm feeling much better now. But thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.